right guys today we are doing a blade profile or a knife profile on the tops ice dagger let's talk about it okay guys so the original history for the tops ice dagger is that it was really meant to be essentially a crisis mitigation tool designed by andy tran who is already quite a capable outdoor and wilderness knife maker tester reviewer this blade has some good design or a good designer behind it and it was truly designed to be a in case of emergency or last ditch tool that's how it got the name ice is in case of emergency and essentially it was designed to be a backup in the event of a firearm failure or loss and that was specifically for military and LE forces, but of course this could apply to anyone. With that said, the primary strengths of the Topps Ice Dagger and what makes it very unique or makes it its own tool is that it has a compound grind that is designed to give the very, very forward portion of the tip a kind of is very thick at the tip giving it a very robust and strong tip for piercing and stabbing through multiple different types of materials whether they be hardened materials like metal or things softer like leather it's going to pierce through without much deformation but the advantage is after the first about half inch of tip it is drastically cut back and the grind is laid back to give you a far better slicing edge to cut through flesh or different lighter uh, materials so that's essentially the history this thing doesn't have as rich of a history and of course isn't designed by some large military force but it definitely does serve quite a purpose so why should you add this guy to your collection why is the ice dagger worth collecting ultimately well, that's a little bit more easily said than some of the other tools. Ultimately, this tool is a specialty knife. Of course, you always want to check with your applicable laws and legalities to make sure that you can carry a knife like this as some counties, some cities, states, all that prohibit the use and carry of double-edged tools such as daggers but assuming this is a legal tool for you this blade is going to be extremely applicable for those that really want a tool that will be a either one replacement to a firearm in close quarters or indoor environments of course this is no replacement for a firearm in distance uh, encounters but in some situations where carrying a firearm is either not allowed or may be detected or alerted. This may be a better option as it's easier to deep conceal than a firearm. In addition to that too, this is also going to be a excellent tool for its original design and intended use and that is as a backup or last ditch self-defense weapon should your firearm uh, cease to work or cease to be available to use once again if it's either lost or inoperable this is a tool that you can use in addition as a force multiplier or as a backup tool in addition to those another role that i would push it into or at least suspect it to be pushed into is high operating in high risk areas once again if you are in an area where the probability of being attacked is going up this is also a good tool as a secondary or backup to something like a handgun or a long gun in addition to that so its purpose of course is quite straightforward it is designed to be a self-defense especially last ditch but a self-defense tool nonetheless in addition to that too you do have your lethal side but another thing that a lot of people don't talk about is the round or ring on this the back of this blade is designed with cuts in it to be a non-lethal now of course i would never recommend pulling this knife out as a non-lethal um, tool to start because of course you do have your edge and that is going to be lethal but the back ring of this is beveled on all surfaces to act as a striking tool should you need to strike someone with the back of this it's going to be reduced and therefore allow you to have added pressure so once again not necessarily encouraging this as a first line of non-lethal but you do have the ability to strike someone with the back of this tool very effectively as a non-lethal form of strike 
Overall, what do I think of this blade? I think that this blade is a huge win. It is one of the more tough and durable daggers that is out there on the market. In addition to, I really like its small size and it is a very, very thin thin blade and very thin profile, making it incredibly easy to carry and deep conceal. In addition to the ring, not only serves as a secondary non-lethal striking instrument, but its primary goal is to help aid with the ease of access. Now, generally speaking, unless you train with using this ring, you probably don't want to hold the blade with any one of your fingers in this ring because they could be broken or snapped rather easily, but the ring is there to allow you, once again, especially if this thing is deeply concealed within some part of your body uh, or on some part of your body or in clothing, uh, that ring is there so that you can put a finger in it withdraw the blade from that area and then hold the blade like a normal dagger. So I do like the ring on this guy from personal experience or carry. Uh, that is a really effective piece of carrying. In addition to the G10 is very, very textured with deep grooves on the forward side so that even if you are holding it in a straight or suboptimal grip, you're still going to get really good traction if you dig into the handle. Of course, you do also have your finger guards that lock you in as well. So overall, this is a really balanced and really well designed dagger for self-defense as a replacement for a firearm in close quarters and most importantly as a last ditch tool should your firearms become inoperable. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look, a deeper look at the Topps Ice Dagger and maybe it encourages you to pick one up. As always guys, God bless and I'm out.